Hi there. I have a question for you. Can you trust science? I mean, really trust it? Unfortunately, that's a question a lot of people are asking these days in view of the mistakes and flip-flops science has committed during the pandemic. Sorry to say. Breaks my heart, but it's true. Um, the concern came to a head recently when the World Health Organization announced out of the blue, it was very unexpected, that when you look at the evidence all together, it shows that asymptomatic people, people who are infected with the virus but don't have symptoms, they are not spreading the virus. And that flew in the face of a fear that a lot of people had. And unfortunately, that fear was fed by scientific studies. For example, one back in January was published by the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most prestigious journals in the world. It was a small study with only four people out of Germany, but it created a commotion. Of course, the media predictably hyped it, ran with it. Um, politicians saw it as one more reason to shut down their countries. And even Anthony Fauci, Anthony Fauci declared, there's no doubt, no doubt, after reading the paper, that asymptomatic transmission is occurring. This study lays the question to rest. I mean, Dr. Fauci knows better than to jump the gun like that. He knows that no single scientific study ever proves anything, especially one with only four patients, but there you go. All right, that's just the start. Um, also recently, Three, no less than three scientific journals have retracted important papers by very prestigious scientists. In fact, two of the papers that were retracted were led by a scientist from Harvard, Dr. Mandeep Mira. So the first journal that retracted a paper was Lancet, British journal, very prestigious, world-renowned. It retracted a paper that claimed hydroxychloroquine did not work against the virus, and worse, actually caused people to have heart trouble. The study was pulled, retracted, because of faulty data. But here again, when the original article was published, the media just ran with it. One TV anchor even went so far as to claim hysterically that, oh my gosh, you can't take hydroxychloroquine, it'll kill you. It's just stupid. The other thing was that the World Health Organization actually stopped all the trials it was sponsoring at that point around the world on hydroxychloroquine out of fear that it was causing people to drop dead from heart problems. Now, because of the retraction, WHO has reinstated these studies, but we've lost precious time, all right? So the second retraction came from the New England Journal of Medicine. Here we go again. They retracted a study that claimed certain blood pressure medications did not increase your risk of being infected by the virus and in fact suggested that maybe these blood pressure medications could protect you against being infected. Again, that paper was retracted because of faulty data. All right. So the third journal was the Annals of Internal Medicine and they retracted a scientific study that claimed cotton and surgical masks Okay, cotton and surgical masks do not work against the virus. In other words, if you're wearing a cotton or a surgical mask and you sneeze and you're infected, the virus goes right through. That's what the study claimed. But the paper has been retracted because they found that the analysis was faulty. All right. I mean, these are just a few of the examples I could give you of what I'm talking about when I say that science has committed uh, a certain number of mistakes and flip-flops during this pandemic, which has confused the public, has misled politicians, and it's raised a lot of very important questions. For example, how is it that scientists who are admittedly very successful, very smart people, very prestigious in their fields, experts in their field, how can they get it so wrong? How could they get it so wrong? Having your paper retracted is a big deal. It's a big spot on your reputation, all right? Second question is, how did these journals, these prestigious journals, allow these papers to get published in the first place? I mean, publishing a, a scientific paper 
is almost like, I hate to say it, like a sacred process. So how is it that these stinkers get, how did they get through the process? How did they get published in the first place? The journals have to explain that, okay? And third, what went wrong with the famous peer review process where you send your paper once you're finished with it, right? You, you write up your paper, you send it into the journal, you submit it, and then the journal is supposed to send it out to some of your peers and they vet it, they critique it. Well, what happened to that process? What went wrong there? All right. So look, part of the problem is obvious. Okay? What we're seeing here is science being done on the fly. It's understandable. Right? We're in the middle of a pandemic. So we, we want to get results out as quickly as we can. But as I've said before, that's not how good science is done. Good science is slow, it's methodical, and it's precise. So even though we're in a crisis, a pandemic, that's no excuse to do bad science. It's no excuse to rush bad science through the process because bad science doesn't make the crisis better. It makes it worse. And I think years from now, we're gonna look back at this period of time and we're going to see just how much damage, how much damage these faulty papers, this faulty scientific research really caused, all right? Now, I'm gonna leave you with this thought. It's not just haste that's the problem here, okay? It isn't. Because under normal circumstances, and we've known this now for years, We've known this for years. Under normal circumstances, there is something wrong, very wrong, fundamentally wrong with the way we are doing scientific research these days. That may sound very dire to you. Um, you may not have heard anybody tell you that before, but it's true. And in the next episode, I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. It's a crisis in science that scientists themselves call a crisis. And I would call it science's dirty little secret, except that it's not a secret. It's out in the open. So I'll explain that to you in the next episode. Okay, you're not going to want to miss that. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay strong, and above all, my friend, stay positive.